Greetings, everyone, and welcome to Back to Ashes. My name is Phoenix. If this is your first time here, or you've been sitting in the back row, but you are enjoying what you are listening to, why not go ahead and hit that subscribe button, and then tap that notification bell and set it to all, so you won't miss any of the uploads on this channel. With all of that being said, it is time to go back to ashes. For once we arise from the ashes, we are bigger, brighter, stronger, and a happier person in the morning. Sit back, relax, kick back, grab a snack, or tuck in to get warm, and prepare for your dose of vocal melatonin entitled True Ouija Stories. Right after this intro, there will be an ad. I'll read the first story, there will be an ad. And after that, there will be no more ads within this video. Disclaimer, this video is for educational and entertainment purposes. When I was about 11, me and my friends were playing the Ouija board at school because it was a rainy day and we weren't allowed to go outside. We started asking it questions about our future, like who will we marry? How many kids will we have? Things like that. But for some reason, the board only wanted to answer questions about me. So I asked the usual, like, who will I marry? It said, no, I won't marry. I asked, will I have any children? It said, yes, four. And that struck me as very odd because I always pictured myself as being married before I had children. And why so many? Four is a lot. Then I asked, who will I have children with? It said, two different people, which also struck me as very odd because I could never picture myself with two baby daddies. I asked what their names were, and it spelled Josh and Dustin. But these names weren't quite relevant to me in my life yet. I then asked it, what will I do for a living? and it said I would be a maid, and I thought it was definitely a joke. Then I asked, what age will I die? And I can't remember for the life of me what age it gave me, but it was in my 40s or 50s, and I was devastated that I'd only be living basically half of a life. And I asked, how would I die? I thought it said a car wreck. And I asked, where will I die? It said in Kansas City, Kansas. I was under the impression that Kansas was a state over. I never knew. It was a city here. Now I am 40 years old and I moved to Kansas City and I actually work at MadePro. I also have four kids with Josh and Dustin, but my brain cannot for the life of me remember what age he died. I mean, what should I do? What do you think? For as long as I can remember, I've had an interest in the spiritual world and thought it would be cool to communicate with the dead. So back in 2014, my mom was browsing around the local Facebook buying selling group and she came across someone selling a used Ouija board. It caught her attention because it was a glow-in-the-dark limited edition, and she decided to buy it for me. She remembered playing with one as a child and thought I'd enjoy it too since we've talked about it in the past. My mom then contacted the seller who would stop by to drop off the board. It was one of those stormy, gloomy, almost spooky days when the guy came to the house to bring us the board. As soon as I saw it, I got a really bad vibe. Once the man left, I told my mom, I don't feel safe using that. I want to do some research first. My mom was surprised at my reaction because before this point, I'd been interested in playing with it. I ended up surfing the web, watching YouTube videos, and hearing many stories, most of which were bad, which made me feel uncomfortable about trying the Ouija board. My mom ended up packing it away in a box on her porch, where it stayed for many years. This brings us to the spring of 2022. By now, I'd 
gotten really interested in the paranormal and had learned a lot more about the Ouija boards and how dangerous they could be. So I reached out to mom and asked, hey, do you remember that Ouija board you put on the porch years ago? I think you need to get rid of it because I heard that just having one in the house can bring on bad luck and negative energy. It's weird because since moving to this house in 2014, we hadn't had a lot of good experiences. She replied, Oh, I got rid of that last time. I reorganized the porch. So, let's fast forward to summer. I am back at my mom's house. I go to school in a different part of the county, but return to her house in the summer. Once back there, I started hearing strange stuff in my bedroom, like whispering. I thought perhaps it was just the air conditioner, but it honestly sounded like voices, and I have never heard anything of the sort. Until that summer, I also sensed that the Ouija board was still in the house. I decided to go look for it on the porch. That's when I see my Ouija box tucked away in a clear storage bin. I grabbed it and brought it to my mom. As we looked into the box, we both noticed it was different. The board in the box looked like new. When we opened it, the planchette was still in its own separate wrap. This was not how we remembered the board. When my mom got it from that guy, it had been used. The box had some wear and tear to it, and the planchette wasn't wrapped in anything. At this point, we're both weirded out and just wanted that thing out of the house. I had heard that Ouija boards could come back and change if you don't properly dispose of them. For the time being, we put it in our backyard because we weren't sure of how to get rid of it. We wanted it out of the house, but leaving it on our property wasn't a smart move on our part. Bad things started happening. The first thing was when my father got into a minor car accident. This was the only time in his life he'd been in an accident in all of his 45 years of driving. Next, our basement flooded. Town sewage backed up into the basement. Disgusting, I know. Before this, we had a dry basement, which had only gotten wet once due to someone leaving a window open during a bad storm. The third thing was when we had a handyman come over and the guy almost fell through our basement stairs. He wasn't hurt, but it really scared my mom. She ended up getting the stairs replaced, even though it was very expensive. Then another thing happened to my dad which proved to be the scariest of all. There was a big fire in his apartment building. Multiple units were destroyed, including the one right above him. Thankfully, no one was injured. His unit did suffer some water damage, so he was forced to move out. It would take at least six months for renovations to his apartment, so he couldn't move back in right away. One final thing happened. While the Ouija board was still in the backyard, my mom and I noticed we didn't have any hot water, so we went to the basement and discovered the water heater wasn't working. We tried to reset it, but couldn't get it back on. A repairman came to check it out and told us that the unit had overheated. Fortunately, there was a safety setting that shut it off before it got dangerously hot. He then explained that the water heater's thermostat was faulty, or it should have never have gotten that hot. If the safety switch hadn't shut it off, it would have blown up. We were very lucky. One thing I noticed is that even with all of these close calls, no one was harmed. It was almost as if someone or something was watching out for us. After that last thing happened with the hot water heater, my mom and I agreed that we needed to get the board off our property ASAP. It seemed to be bringing us bad luck, and we worried that things might even get worse. Even my dad was having bad luck, although my parents were divorced, and he'd never lived in the house with us. My mom decided to get rid of the board. She planned to bring it to the town dump 
She had separated the board from the planchette so she could toss them in two different garbage bins at the dump. As my mom was driving to the dump, she noticed something odd. At a neighbor's down the street, there was a hearse parked in the driveway. A vintage hearse, like from the 1970s. She texted me about it and said, That's weird, but people do buy old hearses sometimes. My mom then disposed of the Ouija board at the dump and headed home. On her way back, she drove past that neighbor's house and saw that the hearse was gone. There was only a dumpster that had been sitting in the driveway. My mom had never seen a hearse in the neighbor's driveway before that day and hadn't seen one since. The neighbor's driveway was too short for both a hearse and a dumpster to be parked. Later that week, my mom and I were at Barnes & Noble and decided to have a coffee at the Starbucks there. Guess what we saw? When we dropped off our serving tray, tucked away near the milk and the sugar, was a Ouija board. I know they sell them in Barnes & Noble, but I guess someone could have left it there. But it still totally freaked us both out. All right, this is going to be long, but I'll try to be in-depth as I possibly can and try to recount everything I've been told. But yeah, if anyone has any ideas or answers, please feel free to tell me. Just before I do start, I'd like to add that I've been heavily involved with paranormal experiences. I've seen spirits walking around. I know when some are present. I do use a pendulum, but a lot of the time I take precaution and make sure to cleanse and protect myself. So, outside of my town, there is an old abandoned orphanage and a memorial for all the children that were abused there and died. And five of us decided it would be a great idea to go out there and explore it. We scoped the place out during the day to find things to get into. and then came back at night at around 11 to 11.30 p.m. We parked a few hundred meters down the road from it, out of sight just in case of the police, and we started walking. We got closer to the gate before one of my friends, C.M., who is like the biggest skeptic adrenaline junkie alive, stops dead in his tracks, turns around, and starts sprinting telling us that he saw someone in front of him. We all started running back towards the car the entire time. There's rustling from the bushes, like something was following us. We get in the car. I turn around and just see three figures, clear as day, standing behind the car watching us drive away. Two girls and one boy between the ages of 13 and 16. So we decided to hell with that. Let's go up to the witch's grave. In hindsight, and awful idea, but we were all excited to go out and explore. I had my pendulum with us, and on the way up was communicating with a spirit that decided to follow us from the orphanage. Her name was Faith, and she was absolutely lovely. Around this time, I started getting a massive headache, and my eyes were watering, but I didn't think anything of it. I started getting really tired and disassociated and fell asleep, or at least I thought I went to sleep. I woke up and it seemed like only five minutes passed. We just reached the town with the grave and one of the guys sitting beside me, Jay, was saying how I was staring out the window the entire time, going into a burst of laughter. I sounded different and my laugh was different. Anyway, we pull up to the witch's grave, and Jay swears that we saw someone walk past the grave. We made a Ouija board and wanted to communicate with spirits with it. I didn't want to get out of the car, and Jay didn't either. So we sat in the car listening to music while the rest, CM, CB, and D, sat in front of the grave messing with that board. Music started doing all 
funky and weird things. The radio was acting up in prior. Everything was working perfectly. About 15 minutes passed, and Jay decides to get out to see how they're doing. Comes back in, followed by everyone else. Seeming a little freaked out, I ask what was wrong, and CM says that Jay was staring behind CM and said, He's right behind you. I turned around and went back to the car. Jay had no memory of this, but the rest of the guys backed CM up. The music stopped working, and we started driving back down the mountain. It got incredibly cold, even with the heater on. I started getting a massive headache behind my head and back of ears, which is apparently a sign of spiritual attachment. CB is driving D in the passenger seat, and CM was by the right window. Jay was in the middle, and I was on the left window seat. Jay started tearing up a little bit and went silent before he just started laughing, turned to me very slowly with the biggest grin on his face and just stared. I asked him what he was doing, and he never responded. A few minutes later, he was himself again. CB, a few minutes later, stared spacing out really badly. We were using the pendulum consulting and asking if there was any possible harm coming our way, in which it violently answered yes. We all yelled for CB to pull over. He was refusing, but eventually did. CM and CB swapped seats. I blacked out from here. From here on out, this is the guys filling me in on what happened. It was an entire hour. CM joked and said that they should see the Ouija board and see what it wants. Upon that, CB replied with in the most polite and formal tone, Yes, we should. Keep in mind, that's also the only thing he said the entire time. And I agreed with him, despite being very against wanting to use the board again. Apparently, CM, J, and D all decided it would be the best option to get some sage and burn it to try and get rid of whatever was attached to it. I am the only one who owns sage. Keep that in mind. And upon hearing the mention of it, they said I burst out crying, apologizing and begging for them to not get it saying that. I didn't want to leave. Jay was freaking out, so him and Dee swapped seats. Dee's family is a line of white witches, so apparently he tried to bless both CB and himself, in which my response to that was violently pushing him off thrashing about, repeatedly saying no, and very coldly and calmly saying, I don't like you. D is like one of my best mates. I have no hatred against him at all. J and ZM do get the sage. Apparently I let them in, flat out refused to touch the sage, stood very far away from it. Got in the car and headed towards the riverbank. CB was very blind, but very slow to follow. They described him to be a zombie, and apparently I was resisting, hesitating, crying, and refused to follow them. So they practically dragged me along. As soon as the sage was lit, they told me that I bolted, got as far away from it as possible, trying to jump over the edge into the river. J and CM had to grab me and forcibly hold me and drag me in place. They said I was crying violently and saying sorry and don't do this, don't do this, over and over. I wake up. I was on the ground, still being held, with D waving the sage around to me. CB checked his phone, and the first thing he said was, it was only 1 a.m., two minutes ago. I felt confused and disoriented and tired. So the best course of action for all of us was to go home and sleep it off. I stayed with CM and J for the night. I woke up the next day feeling like I had drank two bottles of wine and went home. I still felt awful, 
So I went home. The headache behind my ears was still there. I felt cold despite having no fever. It was a warm day and night. I was wearing a hoodie. I was hearing knocking noises, footsteps outside of the door. I had bad heart pain. I was throwing up and my nose was bleeding very badly. My nose has never bled. JNCM messaged me saying that something was wrong. Their mom was concerned about me and that they were coming to get me. So I went with them back to their place. Explained to Jay's mom and dad what happened. Jay's dad, who doesn't really believe in this kind of stuff, but both of them have had paranormal experiences before, told me to get outside and stand on the grass barefoot to ground myself. That kind of worked. CM and I also turned around to stare at the gate because we both heard and saw something and Jay's mom later confirmed and said she saw something too. Ever since then, I see and hear things a hundred times more than what I used to. But just in case, I now carry obsidian with me. Okay, so to start this off, before all of this, I thought Ouija boards and all that mess were fake. But this experience changed my mind. Me and my friend, who we will just call Allie, decided to mess around with the Ouija board for fun. Neither of us actually owned one, so we made it out of paper. As you can imagine, it didn't look so good, but it wasn't terrible. We also somehow crumpled it up, but I don't remember how. At first, nothing was happening because both of us were laughing and spelling out fake stuff on the board. After laughing, however, and for a bit longer, we actually got serious. It took a few tries, but something actually started talking to us. It was moving a bit slow at first, but got faster and faster. We both thought that the other one was moving it. We asked it if it could give us a name, and it went to yes but didn't actually spell out anything. We asked if it was a human, and it said yes. We asked when they were born, and the Ouija went to four. My friend asked BC or AD, and it said BC. We both thought that was a weird, but moved on. We asked if he knew who Castile was. I watched Supernatural, so it was kind of a joke. And they said yes. I asked if they knew other angels, and they said yes. We then asked what they were again, and they spelt out A-N-G-E-L. We asked what their name was again, and they spelt it out A-N-O-A. -A. I asked if it watched me, and it said yes. So I asked it if it was a guardian angel, and it said no. By the way, I didn't want to go to the no all the way across the board, so we just used the blank space as no. My mom walked in at that same point, so we had to hide the board because I don't think she would like us playing with it. She probably knew something was up because we were acting super suspicious, but decided to ignore it. She then said she was leaving, so... We were going to be alone for a while. We got the board back out again and asked if it was still there, and it immediately went to yes. At this point, we both knew it was a demon, so we asked, and it started spelling out Z-O, Z-O. So we hurried and said goodbye. But since we're both dumb and desperate, we went back on. We said it was okay, it was a demon, and continued talking. We asked if it was actually Zozo or not, and to go to D for different demon, and it went to D. We asked if Zozo was even real, and they basically said they cannot say. We asked if demons have genders, and they said yes, and that it was a boy. After this, we started asking questions the other didn't know, like what our grandma's name was. 
I asked if either of us had connections to dead people, and my friend said yes, and asked the demon which one he wanted to talk about, and they spelled out M, which was the first letter of her mother's best friend's name, who's dead. Allie then asked how she died. The police didn't know if it was a murder or suicide, by the way. And it spelled out, man. At the time, I didn't know the story, so she explained it to me. She then asked who it was, and it spelled out the girl's boyfriend. After that, my friend wanted to get off the topic, and so we did. I asked if it knew my uncle's name, which I forgot because he has been dead for a while. It was one of those things I'd see it and know it. It spelled out C, and I remembered his name, which did start with a C. I asked if he knew what my grandpa's name, and it gave me a T, which was the first letter of his name. I asked if he could tell me how he died, and then it spelled out cancer. I then asked if he could give me the first letter of the type and he said, L, he died of lung cancer. I asked if I was going to kill someone in the future, and it said yes. I asked for a name, and he spells out my friend's name. I asked if he was joking, and it said no. We kept joking around with him, like I asked if he was Satan, and he said yes. I said, are you sure about that? And he said no. I asked if Satan had better things to do and if it was a busy man, and he said yes. We also got him to spell out gay. When we asked why he watched me, he spelled out, why not? He also said he didn't know what the internet or school was. He couldn't give us any actual details of our future and was mostly just messing with us. We asked if he liked us and liked talking to us, and he said yes. At some point, we asked if Satan created demons, and he said yes. We asked him about other demons, and he said he didn't like them and didn't talk to them. We asked if he was lonely, and it like literally flew across the board. It seemed like a sensitive topic. It also seemed to be predicting questions before we asked. My dad rung the doorbell, so we said bye, and my friend had to go. That was the end. We had talked to him for two hours. Was it dumb of us to continue talking to him even after he admitted he was a demon? Also, the only time I felt weird was when he spelled out, man. Was it even a demon at all? He was actually really chill and was going along with whatever we said, even if he didn't know what it meant. Strap in, this one's going to be a long one. We talked to Anoa a few more times before something weird happened. He was acting strangely, so we asked if it was a different demon. It said yes. Cue basically the same convo that happened with Anoa originally. He admitted to being a demon and said his name was Mazam. He joked around more than Anoa and was a bit more aggressive. They both ended up being attached to me instead of my friend, probably because I had more of an open energy. Anoa and Mazam didn't like each other and argued a lot over who got to talk to us. The first time we talked to Mazam, he started spelling something out, so we stopped him and asked if it was important. He said yes, so we started to write out what he spelled. He spelled out my first name and wrote, sad. We both were a bit freaked out and asked if we could look up his name. We knew Mazam wasn't their real name, but we just wanted something to call it by. We found a YouTube video. The video is kind of cringy, but whatever. Here is why I got freaked out so bad. The video mentioned being sad and Mazam spelled out sad. I get it sounds kind of stupid and could just be a coincidence, but it still freaked me the fuck out. For people thinking my friend knew about the video and just wanted to freak me out. Honestly, she believes in this stuff more than I do, and she was way more freaked out about this. She wanted to stop, but we continued anyway. 
Nothing really important happened after that. Later, we talked to them again in my living room. They were switching between who talked and started arguing. They suddenly stopped talking, so we left. A week later, we tried again talking to them in my room, but they didn't come. Instead, we got another demon. They said that they were an incubus and gave us a fake name, but I don't remember it. We ended up going to the living room in hopes Mazam and Noah was still there. They were. Long story short, Mazam and Anoa were still fighting, but managed to kill the incubus. We were kind of upset, but I really didn't care. I went to Universal and asked if they went with me. They said yes, and that they enjoyed it. I asked what Mazam's favorite ride was, and he said the Hulk. He said they were riding along with me. Now, get ready for the twist. We got on the board one day, and it didn't sound like either of them, so we asked who it was. They said their name was Dominic. We talked to him and asked if we could have Mazam or Anoa, and at one point, he just left. Mazam came on the board, so we asked if he killed Dominic and what he was. Mazam said he was an angel and that Anoa was fighting him right now. We left so Mazam could also fight him. When we came back, Mazam talked to us. We were really slowing down, even though normally he moves really fast. We asked if Anoa was okay. He said no. We asked if he was dead. He stopped for a moment and hesitantly said yes. He said he was going to be next and we weren't going to see him again. That was the last we heard from either of them. Dominic then talked to us. We had our doubts and didn't believe Dominic was actually an angel. Other demons claimed they were angels, so why should we believe this one? It made him really angry. We didn't believe him. We asked if he had killed Mazam and Anoa, and he said he did. I then made a joke comparing demons to cockroaches. This is important later. My friend said to send a sign if he was an angel, and he agreed. When nothing happened, we left. Immediately afterwards, we walked outside because I had heard an owl. As soon as we stepped out on the front porch, we were greeted with a dead cockroach. We continued, and there was indeed an owl in the tree. My friend looked it up, and in some cultures, owls are death omens. We believed him after that. We talked to Dominic a week later. He was still angry at us, even though we apologized and said we believed him. We talked to him for a bit and asked about our futures. He said we have different pathways, and he can't say exactly what will happen. He did give us some information about my friend's dad, though. We're not exactly sure if it's true because my friend doesn't even know what happened. At one point, he also said Mazam and Anoa were high-level demons. He said he was going to watch over us and kill demons that came near us. We asked a lot of questions he couldn't answer. I'm assuming that's just some things that they can't say, considering the demons did the same thing. He talked to us a few times after that, but not for long, because he hates us. Soon after that, when we tried to talk to Dominic, some rude-ass demon came in instead. Whenever we asked for a name, he said, DP. He wasn't answering any of our questions. At one point, he spelled out, Omen. Dominic came on for a minute and just left. Like I said, he hated us. We went for a walk later and saw a dead bird whose guts were ripped out. Do you think the dead duck is related to the demons? Side note, we haven't used the Ouija board in a while because whenever we come on, it's the DP demon and he's so fucking annoying. I don't know if this is worth listening to, but I'm gonna insert it here anyway. I was rummaging around on my desk and a nickel fell and went halfway under my closet door. I looked at it for a second and considered picking it up, but decided I'll do it later. I forgot about it. 
A few hours later, I was on the phone with my friend and was rummaging around my desk again. And a nickel fell once more. I thought, huh, that's weird. Didn't that just happen? And looked for the original nickel I dropped and could not find it. So basically, the nickel suddenly reappeared on my desk and I dropped it again. I don't think anyone else could have picked it up because, one, no one goes in my room. And two, it was almost under my closet. And there is no way someone could have just noticed it. This happened after the whole Dominic thing. Okay, so before I begin, I'd like to explain that this story is quite controversial. Some people don't believe me, and some do. I don't ask that you believe me. I just tell this story to mainly make people aware that Ouija boards should be taken very seriously. Make sure you look up proper procedures and how to use it before playing around with one. So... I'd like to begin that this story I've tried to forget, and I cannot remember every single detail. I can't remember every one of the questions we asked and the answers we received. I can remember a few, but not 100%. I can't remember what happened with me. And this story is my brother Nick, my sister-in-law Brittany, her friend Ashley, and my girlfriend at the time, Katie. And with that, let's begin. I'm going to take you back to the summer of 2010. This year, I had a rush of getting into the paranormal. The fact that ghosts and demons are real fascinating to me and would make my adrenaline pump when I would encounter such things. Well, this particular night, my sister-in-law had asked me if I had ever taken part in a Ouija board. And at that time, I had no clue what that even was. So she knew, obviously, I never had. So she began explaining what Ouija boards are, how they work and such. Then she asked me if I would like to experience it for myself. Of course, just at the thought, my heart had skipped a beat. So we decided that we would do it and had to find a place to do it. Her parents wouldn't let us do it at their house. My brother and her were only dating at that time, let alone even around the house. So me and my brother decided, fuck it. I know mom and dad won't let us do it inside, but outside on the porch in the garage shouldn't be a big thing, right? So we go down to my parents' house and we start setting up shop on the back porch. Got a candle, matches, pen and paper. Grab some chairs around a table and set ourselves around it. Just as we were starting, my heart started pumping so fast and hard, I was really nervous. Was this really going to work, I wondered. So we all put our hands over the Ouija, and Brittany had one hand over it so she could write with the other, and we started by asking if there are any friendly spirits around us that would like to communicate with us. The Ouija board moved to no, and I started freaking out. I'm only barely touching this fucking thing. I mean, my fingers are pretty much hovering over it with the paperclip, thin gap away from the planchette. Triangular shaped piece, usually with a small glass circle in the center, used to cast over letters and such to communicate with people. I asked if anybody was moving it and told them to stop fucking with me. I ain't got time for this bullshit. And everyone was saying, no, we're not playing around with you. We want this all to work, just as bad as you are. And Brittany asked Nick to be serious. Are you playing around? And to stop it. So he said he was it, and he wanted it to work too. So then Brittany's voice became firm, and she stated that only benevolent entities are welcome here, and any violent entities were not welcome to speak with us and that they could go ahead and leave or we'll just end the session. So we wait a few minutes. I'll place our hands over the planchette again. And Brittany states again, are there any spirits here with us tonight that would like to communicate with us? 
the plan chat slowly moved to yes. So, sure, maybe an entity was lying to us. Who knows, right? But we decide to keep going, trying to communicate with the spirit. Brittany asks, is there anyone in particular here that you would like to speak with? The board this time pretty swiftly moved to yes and back to the center. Now, usually you are the ones that would push the planchette back to the center, but this spirit just seemed to guide it the whole entire time we were communicating with it. Brittany begins to ask it, who would it like to communicate with? The board slowly spelt out Ashley's name. Now, Ashley began getting nervous, asking, why me? Why does it want to start with me? She seemed to be getting nervous and shit. I would, too, if it had specified wanting to communicate with me first. So Brittany tells Ashley to ask it something, that this could be a relative or could be a lying demon. She told her to ask a question that only she would know and no one else did, and it could not be an easy answer. And Ashley asked what year the spirit had died, if it had even ever lived. I can't remember the year it spilled out, but I do remember her exclaiming that that was the year her mother had died. And she began getting frantic and sad, but she was interested. So Brittany told her to ask questions only her mother would know. I can't remember all of these, but Ashley asked personal questions only her mother would know. Not even any of us would have known and things started getting really creepy. So here's Ashley becoming very emotional, believing she is really speaking with her mother at one point. One of us would take our finger off and see if it would go with just three of us, then two of us, then just Ashley herself. And the planchette was still slightly moving around with just Ashley hovering two fingers above the piece. Whoever it was had a strong connection with her. I remember the spirit spelling out how thankful it was Ashley found my sister-in-law, that her mother never left her side and was just happy she had a real friend in her life that truly cared for her daughter. After all this had happened, and I mean, we spent a good time, over an hour, maybe even more than two hours, communicating for Ashley. And just like that, Ashley felt she had asked enough we asked that her mother's spirit stay with us and ask if there was any other friendly spirits around that would like to communicate with us. And if so, would stay and watch over us. Well, the board went to yes and no. We asked what it meant and it slowly spelled out evil and good. And that they, the good, fought evil away. We thanked her mother and the other spirits for protecting us and asked her mother if she would communicate with us with the others. The board went to yes. So we all began taking turns. My brother, then Katie, just asking random questions. My brother being stupid and asking how he would die. And I forget what the board said. I think it had said age or something. Assuming it was saying old age. And he said that that shit is lame. And the girls all gave him shit because I guess you're not supposed to ask questions like that. There's some things you shouldn't ask because you shouldn't know. You should just let them play out. Well, it gets to my turn and I couldn't really think of much. I knew I was thinking around asking if it was going to die young like my brother had asked just to piss off the girls. But to be honest, when I was younger, I never thought I was going to make it past 18. I just felt like I was here for a good time, not a long time. Still kind of feel that way, but obviously I made it past 18. Well, actually, I hardly did. Anyway, I asked it if my grandfather was okay and if he made it to heaven. And I got a yes and proud as a response. Then I asked it if I was ever going to be a successful football player. That year I had just received offers to go play for the Miami Hurricanes and Ole Miss. And I wanted to know 
if I could go pro. The board said yes. I got excited and then asked the board which one to take, and it spelled out M-I-S-S. -S. I got excited because that was the school that I wanted to go to, but I also felt like maybe these were easy answers. Maybe it can read what I want, and that's how it's answering now. I don't know. Who knows if we were still communicating with Ashley's mom? So I asked it if I could make it to Ole Miss. The board said, no. I got hurt. That shit fucked me up. I asked it why. It slowly spelt out, accident. I then asked, what accident? Am I going to get hurt? It said yes. Now, everybody was getting really nervous, but I was getting pissed. And Brittany reminded me that I was asking questions that you should never be asking. But now I was invested. Fuck it. I wanted to know. It slowly spelt out. Car. And death. Well, at this point, Brittany had had enough. I was asking questions I shouldn't be. So had my brother. She didn't like the feeling she was receiving anymore. From the energy in that room and she decided to begin ending the session. Well, that's just what she did. Well, now we shortly just get to why. I tell the story to warn people about Ouija's. A year and a half later, so 2011 in my junior, I got a job at a pizza place delivering pizzas after football season to help my parents pay out some bills like my cell phone, gas and such and helping them out if they needed it. Well, one night, a night that I can't even remember, I only remember what I was told. I got into a really bad car accident while at work one night. Apparently, from what eyewitnesses had told police, what the doctors and police told me the next morning when I finally gained consciousness at around 7 to 8 a.m., I was coming around a corner on US-1 an old highway down here in Florida with a bit of traffic following me on the other end was two cars parked side by side in the median one of the vehicle well the one I hit was parked in the median but majority out on the road of the highway so here came me in a bunch of traffic with nowhere to go I slammed into this lady's back end of her trailblazer at about 75 miles per hour I don't wear seatbelts, so I bounced the fuck around inside, hitting my windshield and blowing out my driver window with my face. And I had hit her so hard that our cars bounced apart, and my vehicle almost went off the edge into the water. A big river next to the highway. The front end of my vehicle was crushed all the way to my windshield. Sorry I said I'd keep this part short. I got a grade three concussion. A contusion on my forehead the size of a cantaloupe, maybe bigger. Tore my meniscus, broke my leg, and such. I stayed in the ICU for two weeks. Didn't get to go back to school that year. I was in the hospital, homebound because I got so messed up I could barely walk from torn muscles and fractures in my leg. I was having seizures, and doctors were afraid of me bumping my head saying I could easily die, so I stayed in a wheelchair for a few months at home. So yeah, I never got to play football again, lost all my scholarships, and couldn't help but think, for the love of fucking God, did this happen to me because I had asked this Ouija board about it, and it had told me all of this would happen? If I never did ask, what would have happened? Long story short, either don't fuck around with Ouija's or be very careful out there if you do. And that, dear listeners, brings an end to these true Ouija stories. Before I go any further, I would like to give a special shout-out to the elite members of Back to Ashes. 
Tammy Slayton, Mrs. Innerscare, Chrissy Elias, Sugared Spite, Tina Mead, Cindy, Amy Klintko, Anita V, Doba Khaleesi, Ida Smith, Colt Stonewolf, Eliza Crispin, Samantha Place, Patty's Niece, Denise S, Call Me Carter, Corpse Lover, and Cindy Cleveland. Thank you all so much for your support, for without you, there wouldn't be a me or this channel. I humbly bow before you. If you are sleeping, I hope Slumberland is treating you kindly. If you are awake, I hope you've enjoyed this collection. Until next time, please look after yourself and stay safe. I'll read to you soon. Have yourself a good morning, a good afternoon, or a good evening. Peace, love, and light to you all.